Hi, I'm Alistair, and in this video I'd like to teach you how you can use your mobile phone to control an Arduino project, uh, particularly how you can send and receive SMS text messages, and how you can also make calls through the mobile phone network between these two devices. So on the board here I've got an Arduino Uno at the top that's got a GSM shield stacked on top of it. And that shield has got a SIM card uh, loaded into the back of it. It's a regular SIM card like you'd put in a mobile phone. And we're going to be able to, to use this shield to emulate much of the behaviour of a mobile phone really, but scripted through an Arduino sketch. Um, now that's really the guts of the project and that's the, the main thing that I want to demonstrate. But I've also got some other components laid out just to show some of the things you can do with this. So I've got a two channel relay here. One of those channels is controlling this maglock and the other one is going to this 12 volt bulb. And then I've also got a, a power supply unit at the bottom that's powering all this. So uh, the Arduino Uno is running a sketch that is uh, constantly polling the shield here to ask it if any data has been received. So if there's an incoming SMS message or if there's an incoming phone call. And depending on things like who that message has come from, uh, the sender or the time or the content of the message, it can control different outputs. So let me uh, unlock my mobile phone to start with. And also if I just put the serial monitor window on, so you'll be able to monitor what the Arduino is seeing coming in from the shield. So I'm going to send an SMS uh, text message to the number associated with that SIM card. And to start with, I'm just gonna send the, mo the word on. You can see I've had a bit of a conversation already with it this morning. And when I send that message, so it's just been sent, go to a couple of seconds, and you'll see on the serial monitor connection there that we've uh, got a bit of a code received, this plus CMT, that's an AT command code to say that an SMS message has been received. We've passed the content, we know who it's from, we know the time and date, and what it's done is turned the relay on. Uh, now, to turn the relay off again, you'll be unsurprised to learn, I should think, that um, you can send the word off instead. So now if I send that text, and that's just gone, and if we wait for a few seconds, once again, we'll see on the serial monitor, a message has been received, we've been able to pass the content and control an output accordingly. Okay, so that's uh, SMS messages. Uh, what about phone calls? So. Uh, if I load my phone app and I'm just going to dial the number, or hopefully I've got it in my phone book, there we go. Uh, call, there we go. So I'm just going to call the number. Now when I call that number, I'm just going to hold my hand here because uh, the action which I've got triggered when an incoming phone call is received from my number uh, is to unlock the mag lock. But it's possible to switch that behaviour based on um, who the caller is. Uh, so caller ID is enabled on the SIM and um, you can switch behaviours uh, differently there. Um, now, this maglock will stay unlocked for as long as I stay on the line, so I can't get that to go back on. But as soon as I hang up, uh, if I do that, you'll hear the maglock engage again and I can click that back on. It's also worth mentioning that um, the shield itself has these two uh, audio out, um, one audio output, one audio input at the top. So this is for a microphone and a speaker. And uh, if you program the Arduino to answer an incoming call, for example, uh, these two will uh, feed any audio um, to a, a standard microphone or thing. So I can dial that number. And if I program the Arduino to answer the call, I can then listen in on whatever the microphone input has being supplied to it. That might be a pre-recorded message or it might be a, a live microphone input. And likewise, my voice, as I speak down the line, when the Arduino is answered, will come out of this audio output. So you can use this as a kind of a, a remote um, monitoring or broadcast system that you dial into on your phone and you can either announce and it will come out the audio or you can listen in to whatever's in the input. That was all about um, receiving calls but you can also get this to make outgoing calls as well. So there's loads and loads of um, different ways you can do this. I think it's a really fun uh, project. So let's take a look in more detail at this uh, GSM shield because like I say this is really the heart of the project. 
So uh, this is a board that's got the same size as an Arduino Uno and it simply slots right onto the top of it, the pins line up. Um, and it does actually have uh, some female header pins on the top of it as well. So any pins that are unused, you can plug other components in uh, to the Arduino as well. And that's how I've got the relay board plugged in at the bottom here. Um, the main chip on this board is something called a SIM 900, which is here in the middle. And that's the thing which is going to handle all of the uh, communications with the mobile phone network. And it's got a, a bunch of other components as well. It's got some uh, LED lights and things like that. Um, particularly the most important LED is one at the top here that says net light. And that kind of gives you a, a status of what's happening on the board at the moment. What you want is for that LED to be blinking about once every three seconds. If you get that, um, then it means that the board is receiving power and it is successfully logged onto a mobile network. Um, if you don't have the lights on at the top like that when you have power supplied, there's nothing you need to do. It should join the network automatically. So if that's not happened, you might find you need to press this uh, power button at the bottom. Now, some blog posts I've read from people that have used these kind of boards uh, say that you need to kind of toggle the power a few times. Some people have done hacks where you can turn the power on from the Arduino by uh, soldering over one of these jumpers. I didn't have to do that on my board. Um, so I'm just speaking from my experience is that I didn't need to do anything. But if for whatever reason you find that your uh, net light LED is not doing that steady pulsing once every three seconds, you might need to press this power button at the bottom just to, to get it into the right mode to do that. Speaking of power, um, although, like I said, it does plug into the Arduino boards and it runs at five volts, however, it requires um, substantially more power than the Arduino can supply. So you're going to need to have an external uh, power supply coming in here. So I've got a five volt, uh, three amp power supply, which I've got coming to the side here. You'll find that um, you'll need at least two amp power supply, I'd probably recommend three or, or it would be safer to have more. It will only draw as much as it needs. But when uh, communicating over GSM, you'll find that this actually does draw quite a lot of power. There's a little switch here next to the barrel adapter that lets you choose between whether to have this external power or internal power. But um, I'm not quite sure why you'd ever want it set to internal power because you, you can't source that much current from the five volt output of an Arduino. So I'd always have that set to external and use a decent power supply. If you try this project and you find that the, the board is resetting uh, randomly or if you're getting kind of garbage characters coming over the serial monitor link, it's almost certainly because you haven't got a, a good enough power supply. So that's where I'd always look to start with. A um, couple of other things. So um, there's an aerial here. Um, there's actually uh, two sorts of aerial sockets. There's an SMA aerial connector. There's a UFL one here as well. This came supplied with my board and I found the supplied aerial ball to be perfectly good enough. I'm getting good reception inside, outside, in different places around my studio and things like that. So um, that's been fine for me, but in theory you could replace it with a, a beefier antenna if you wanted to. Um, I mentioned the uh, microphone jack and the headphone jack. I sort of don't know quite how to demonstrate that to you in a video um, because it's hard for you to see where the different sounds are coming from. Um, but like I say, when a phone call is answered by the board, um, these two become active and they're possible to um, both send and receive audio that's happening on the phone call through those two lines there. Um, and I think that's, um, that's basically it. Everything else which I'm using on the board here are all components I've used many times in projects before. So um, the maglock, the bulb, the relay. Um, this is a five channel relay. So I've got um, this connected to five volt ground and I'm using A0 and A1 just as the, uh, the control pins there. Um, and everything else is, is pretty standard. So I'm not gonna uh, look too much at that. So let's instead look at the Arduino code. So here's the Arduino code and it is uh, relatively substantial in this project. So we've got a total of 327 lines of code here. 
And one of the reasons why this is bigger than some of my other projects is because I'm not actually making use of any external libraries to handle the GSM shield. I've kind of manually written inside this one file uh, all of the individual functions which are going to handle the different um, commands that we send to the GSM shield. Now there are libraries available. Um, there's an Arduino library that actually comes with the IDE installation for handling it. I couldn't get that to work with my shield um, because it requires um, pins, a certain hard-coded pin numbers to be attached to the shield and which differed from the pin out on the shield I was using. There are some other third-party libraries as well but they didn't work for me. So um, this is basically handwritten from scratch. Um, so it is quite verbose, there's quite a lot in it but um, hopefully it will enable you to see exactly what's going on at each step. So um, all my projects basically follow the same format. So if you've followed along any of my other tutorials, we'll go through it um, in roughly the same order as always. So I am using um, one library, but it's nothing specific to do with GSM functionality. This is the software serial library that just means we can set up a, a serial connection using a receive and a transmit pin. Um, and that's gonna be how we communicate from the Arduino to the GSM shield and back again as well. Uh, using this library here and in fact when we set on to the the global section where we define the global variables used throughout the code we can see that we actually declare that software serial object here so we're using the seven pin on the arduino as the receive pin and the eight pin as the transmit pin now confusingly that means that uh, in order to receive messages on the seven on the arduino that means that actually goes to the transmit pin on the gsm shield and the transmit pin on the Arduino goes to the receive pin on the GSM shield because they sort of swap around where one transmits, the other one receives, and, and vice versa. Uh, we also define a, a character buffer here. So when we send any messages to the, um, to the GSM shield, we're going to be writing to this software serial connection. And the shield often replies back with a little uh, success or failure message. Also, when a, an incoming call arrives or when an SMS text message arrives, um, we're going to receive the details of that incoming message. Uh, so the contents of the text itself, the phone number it came from, the date and time, things like that. That's going to be sent over this serial connection here. So we're going to define a character buffer that will fill up with all of the values received over this serial connection. Now an SMS message is 160 characters uh, at maximum and then all that extra metadata I was just talking about uh, means we've got to leave room for that as well. So I've declared a buffer of 256 bytes um, and that should be uh, plenty. I've certainly been fine for all the tests I've used. Um, and then because in this example I'm controlling some relays, I've just uh, defined the two channels uh, of the, the relay I'm using. So I'm going to do a two channel relay on A0 and A1. So that's all the global variables. And we'll go into the setup. So uh, very straightforward, we'll initialize the relay pins as outputs. We'll initialize the serial connection. Now, this is the serial connection that uh, we're using to the PC. So this is what we're going to use to monitor the serial monitor in the Arduino IDE to print out those um, serial.print messages so we can see what's going on. But we also begin uh, the software serial connection. And that's the serial connection from the Arduino to the GSM shield. So we've got, uh, this is using the hardware interface on the Arduino. This is using a software interface, um, both at 9,600 board, which is a kind of a fairly standard board rate to use. Uh, we'll print a little output message on the serial connection. So remember, this is the serial connection that's going to the PC, not the one to the GSM shield. And we'll just give it a bit of time. So we're going to count up uh, 10 dots and we'll just put little dots there this is going to give the um the the board time to start up and actually connect to the network it does connect automatically to the network when it first powers up but it can take around 10 seconds so that's why i just put this delay here while we wait for that to happen and then once it's fired up we need to send a, a couple of configuration messages that are going to change how it behaves and these are all sent using a, a kind of a syntax that looks like uh, this. So this is the AT instruction set. 
And most of the commands um, that you send to, to any kind of modems like this begin with AT and then a plus and then normally a four character command that all sort of do different things. So we'll do a sequence of these in order and we always do the sort of the same thing. So we'll put an output to the serial monitor saying what we're going to do. Then we will print the command and we'll print this one to the GSM serial connection. So once again, this one's going back to the PC so a human can monitor what's happening to it. This one is going to the GSM shield to actually tell the, the shield to do something. And then having sent that message, what we then need to do is to wait for a reply to see if um, you know it's successful or not. And that's what this read GSM buffer does. Um, we'll come on to that later on because that function is defined in a bit. But what it basically does is it um, waits to have a response from the shield and then it will uh, will then print that message out. So we'll do this several times to sort of set different configuration changes. This command here, AT plus COPS, uh, that will simply print out uh, a list of the networks which the phone is connected to. So in my case, it will tell me that I'm on Vodafone UK. Okay. Uh, we then set the format that we want to send SMS messages in. So this CMDF equals one, that will set it to text format. So rather than sort of like a binary format or something like that, we'll set it to simple text, uh, which is going to make it much easier for us to uh, send and receive messages and to, to see what's going on. Uh, this command here, this is about the uh, when an SMS message is received, what happens with it? We don't want to store it in memory on the phone or anything like that. What we want to do is to immediately dump any uh, SMS messages received uh, over the serial connection to the Arduino. Uh, so that's what um, this command here is. All these commands, by the way, this comes from a, a standard instruction set for the SIM 900 chip, which is what's running on the shield. And you can uh, look them up here. There's a load of other commands as well that, um, you know, if you're interested, you can see what other things you can do with this chip. Um, but I'm not going to go into the detail here because you can look them up yourself or you can just trust me that that's what, uh, that's what that command is doing. Um, now, uh, on some networks, depending on whether your network's allowed it or not, um, if you issue this command, it will report your own mobile phone number back to you. So the mobile phone number that's attached to the SIM on the field um, this will print it out. It doesn't always work. It uh, depends on your network provider having um, sort of activated that feature. So you might just get the message OK come back instead in the serial monitor, so don't worry about it. Uh, and finally, we're going to enable uh, caller ID. This means that when we receive incoming calls from different numbers, we'll be able to change the behavior of the Arduino depending on who it is that's calling us. Uh, so that's just a feature that, that needs to be enabled as well. So after each of those commands, we issue the command. Then we wait and re uh, retrieve a response on the shield if there has been one. And we will print whatever the response was. Now we've got to the end of setup. So we'll just print one more line to the, the serial connection. And then at the bottom, I've commented it out here because I was using a lot of credits on my SIM card to keep on ringing me every time. Uh, but here I've actually called the make call functions. This is going to make an outbound call from the Arduino. It's going to ring my mobile phone basically to tell me that uh, the function is completed. Um, so that's just an example of, of where you might want to use that uh, in a script somewhere. And then we get onto this uh, read GSM buffer uh, function. So this is the one which uh, I told you we, we read earlier and what this does is it opens the uh, connection, the serial connection between the Arduino and the GSM shield and it waits for any input to be received over that connection and fills up the buffer object um, so that we can then examine it and, and see what kind of message has been received. So the first thing we do is we just empty out uh, the buffer so we fill the buffer um, to its maximum extent just with uh, null characters. Uh, we define a few timeouts um, so we expect the uh, the total length of time uh, for a message to be received from the GSM buffer, well, I've set it to five seconds here, which is very high. You don't probably need it to be that high, but I thought it'd be on the safe side. And then between any individual characters within that message, we'll wait a second before waiting to see if we receive another one. So just to make sure we definitely capture the whole message received, if for whatever reason there's a little break in transmission, 
Uh, if it's any longer than a second, we'll assume we've got to the end of the message received. Um, so that's just uh, basically just ensuring that we capture the whole uh, message that comes in because some of these messages can be quite long and they contain uh, several items of data. Now, uh, the next bit is um, a little bit tricky, but what we're going to do is we're first going to set up a counter. We're going to record the time at which we start processing the data. And we'll also record the time at which the last piece of data was received. Uh, so they're going to help us uh, implement these timeouts that we had up here. And then we're going to set up a, a loop here, which this while true uh, simply means it's going to repeat forever until it is forced to break out. So we've got a couple of breaks in here that will jump out of the loop. But until we encounter one of those, this is just going to go round and round forever. So, OK, so while true, what we're going to do is find out whether there is any data available on the GSM serial connection. That's what GSM.available is going to tell us. So it means there's at least one item of data has been sent from the field to the Arduino. And if there is an item waiting for us, well, what we're going to do is we're going to read whatever the next value is. And we'll read it as a, a character, which we'll call char. Uh, we'll update the uh, timer that says, OK, well, this is we've just received a new piece of information. So we'll record the current time. That's what Millie's gives us. And we'll assign that to the time last character received. We'll then look at whatever the, the next item in the um, buffer array is. So, so we'll advance onto the next value of the buffer array. And we'll copy the new byte that we've received, the new piece of, of data we've received. We'll copy into the next bit of the buffer. So what we're doing, we started at the top with an empty buffer. And now we're advancing through it one character at a time and copying in the bytes of data that have arrived at the uh, GSM serial interface. And that's going to keep happening until one of these conditions forces it to break out. So having copied an item of data, well, let's see if uh, the counter has exceeded the size of the buffer. If it has, then the buffer's obviously full, so we want to break out. We don't want to keep on copying items of data because we'll get a buffer overflow. Um, if, the, there, if there is no more data available, uh, let's compare some other things. So again, we'll compare after the data stopped, have we now exceeded the buffer? If so, we'll break out of the loop. Or has the time, is the difference in time between the time now and the time we started processing this command, has that exceeded the total timeout? Uh, which we assigned up here. So that was five seconds. If we spent longer than five seconds processing this command, we'll break as well. Or alternatively, if the time which the last character received is greater than zero, so it means we've received at least one character, and also the time at which that last character was received, the difference between that and now, is greater than the individual character timeout, then we'll break as well. So as soon as any of those three conditions are met, we're saying, OK, we've either got a complete message or we've waited long enough and we've, we've not received any more data. Alternatively, the buffer's full. And if any of those things are, are true, we'll stop processing the data. Um, and then we can actually go on to see what we've received. So we've now got a buffer that contains some information that's been sent from the GSM shield, but we don't know what yet. So in the next section of the code, we've actually got several uh, different functions that look through that buffer and try to determine um, what information it's telling us, basically. Uh, so the first one is receive SMS. So this is going to look through the buffer and see if it contains uh, some content like this because this is the format of the message that's going to get sent from the GSM shield to the Arduino over that serial connection every time a SMS text message has been received. So it'll look exactly like that. So what we're going to do, uh, again, so this is, this is quite complicated if you're not familiar with um, programming. You don't need to worry too much about this, but I'll, I'll try to explain what's going on, because just because I think it's I mean, it's important to know and it's useful to know, but I'll just explain what's going on. So we're going to try and extract uh, three pieces of information from that 
string in the buffer that looks like this at the moment, okay? So we're just going to, to set up some, some variables, first of all, that's going to help us search for that. So the first thing we're going to do, notice that when a, a SMS message has been received, the uh, buffer content will start with this plus CMT and then a colon. So we're going to look for an occurrence of that string within the buffer. And that's what str str does. So str str is a, a standard C command that looks for one string within another string. And if it finds it, it will tell you the position at which it finds it. If uh, that function, if stressor returns something other than null, it means that it's found uh, an occurrence of this somewhere. So we know that we are looking at a, um, a command that's come from the GSM field that's told us that a text message has been received because we found this CMT command. Okay, great. And we also know where that uh, happened because uh, we've assigned that to the variable s. So what we'll now do, so come back and, and look at this um, again. So remember, this is the structure of the message. What we now need to find is the occurrence of this uh, first um, speech mark because uh, that's going to help us identify the sender's phone number where this message came from. So we're going to find the first speech mark. So again, we'll use strustra, um, but this time we're going to be starting from the section of the string s, uh, which is where the CMT was. So we're just going to start from this part of the buffer. So there might have been other stuff before this. We're going to ignore that. We're just going to start from here, and we'll find the first occurrence of the speech mark character. Uh, it's got this backward stroke in front of it. Um, because it's a, a special character, so it needs to be escaped. Otherwise, if we were looking for a speech mark and it kind of looked like that, it'd be very complicated to say what you're actually looking for. So if you if you need to enclose a speech mark as a string, which itself would normally be between speech marks, you, you put a backstroke in front of it. So we're now going to, to look for the, the, the first speech mark. Okay, and now... If we find that, um, what we're then going to do is look forward one more character. So whatever index number P finds, that's going to be the position of the first speech mark, so there. We're then going to add one more to that, so we're going to here, and we'll call that P2. So P2 is now set as the first uh, character, in this case it's a plus, plus 44, because it's the international area code that's dialing. But it's going to be the first character of the mobile phone string. We'll now do Strustra again. This time we're starting from P2, so we know that that was the first character, and we're going to find the next speech mark. So we're going to count forward until we get to here. And assuming that we find another speech mark somewhere, so as so long as P is not null, what we now need to do is count all of the characters, starting from P2, which we'd already signed, all the way up to P, which was this one here, and we need to, to extract those and put them into this character array phone. And that's what this section does here. So we'll say i is naught. And while uh, p2 is less than p, so until we count up to the end of the phone number, um, we'll uh, assign the next character in the phone character array to uh, whatever counter we've got up to. So we're starting at P2 and we're counting forwards. We're starting at the beginning of phone and we're counting forwards as well. And we're just going to assign them one character at a time from P2 into phone. And lastly, we need to put a, a terminator character on the end of phone um, because it's a, a pointer. And the way that pointers work in C is that uh, it's uh, an address of memory that's just going to keep going. So we, we, we put this character on the end to basically say this is the end of the text string. It's like a terminating character. Okay, so that was that was pretty detailed. That was pretty in-depth. If you're not familiar with Arduino code, if you're not familiar with, with C, that can be quite scary. But you, you don't need to worry about it too much. What you need to know is that we had a message like this that was sent from the, the GSM field. And what we've been able to do is just take out uh, one useful bit of that by using uh, text passing. And now what we're going to do is we're going to take out the other the other two sections as well using almost exactly the same technique. So to get the date time string uh, we're going to search for uh, commas this time because that's what was used to separate uh, out 
um, the, the date time string here, it's separated by commas. And to get the message itself, uh, we're then going to um, look for a line break here. So um, the actual SMS message itself appears on, on a new line. Um, so there's a carriage return here and then a new line and then this is the bit that we want to actually extract into the, the message itself. So we'll do that and then we'll copy that into message. Great, so we've done all that. We can now return true and right at the end, this return false here, well, this is what was going to happen if this bit uh, was not true. So that means that we haven't found a CMT code. So whatever uh, whatever message we've just received from the GSM shield, it wasn't the arrival of an SMS message. Okay, phew. If you survived all that, well done. That's probably the, the hardest bit of the code over with now because a lot of the, the next bit pretty much copies the same idea. So um, this is a function which is going to look at the buffer received from the GSM shield and it's going to see whether it was an incoming call instead. Now incoming calls are a little bit easier, they have the word ring and then on the second line, assuming you've enabled this CLIP which we did at the beginning remember, uh, CLIP related to the caller ID. So we enabled that function here. If, you, if we hadn't have done this in setup then we wouldn't get the, uh, the next line in the ring function. It'd just say ring and you'd know there's an incoming call but you wouldn't know who from. But because we enabled that uh, CLIP function, we get this additional information here um, when a call comes in. Um, so, uh, almost exactly the same. We're going to search for the buffer for the occurrence of the word ring. If we find it, we're then going to search for speech marks. And when we do that, we can extract the phone number like that. And we'll copy that into phone. Perfect. And if ring wasn't found, then it wasn't uh, an incoming ringtone. Uh, and the other message I'm looking for is what happens when a call is ended. Well, when you get that, you get this message that says no carrier. Um, so this is really simple because we don't have anything to extract this time. We don't need to know the phone number that we were on the phone to. Uh, we simply know that whatever call was in progress has ended. So we'll just search and say... Using Strustra, if no carrier appears anywhere in the buffer, um, then we'll say that the call's ended. Otherwise, it hasn't done yet. Phew, great. Uh, there's now um, two more functions. So all of those functions there, call ended, receive call, and receive SMS, they all related to searching the contents of this buffer. So that was all incoming data from the GSM field to the Arduino and the matter of extracting uh, what that data was, was telling us and what was going on. The next two functions are the opposite. So these are both functions that start with the Arduino and send messages to the shield to tell it to do something. And there's, there's two examples here. Um, this first one is how to send an SMS message. Uh, and the second one is how to make a phone call. So uh, to send an SMS message, um, we will print to GSM, remember that's the software serial connection that goes to the shield, and we'll use this AT plus CMGS uh, sort of syntax here. Then the phone number, who you want to send the SMS message to. We'll wait for a little bit um, because the, um, the GSM shield itself kind of acknowledges that you're about to send an SMS message first, and then you actually send the content that you, that you want to send to the shield. So we'll do it in two stages. First of all, this is telling Shield we want to send a SMS message. This is telling it the content that we want to send. And this is a little bit odd. Um, this uh, char 26, this is the same as pressing um, control Z on a keyboard. It's a non-printable character, but it's used to indicate uh, the end of the content of an SMS message. So we'll send that, and that lets the Shield know that the message is ready to send. And that's it, that will send uh, this text message here to that number. Um, and uh, making call is arguably even easier. Making call, we use uh, ATD, then the phone number, including the uh, the country code at the beginning. Um, and then what I've done here is I've, I've just let it ring for 10 seconds. It's a little bit like a prank call, this one. 
Um, and then we hang up, and we hang up by sending the ATH command instead. So ATD starts a ghoul, ATH hangs it up again. Fantastic. Right. Well done. If you're, if you're still with me, uh, we are so nearly there. We've basically only got the loop function left, which is the main program loop that just runs over and over again while the, um, while the code is running. So on every iteration through the loop, we're going to check to see whether we've received any data coming in from the, the GSM shield. So this is the function we've already looked at before. It's going to clear the buffer and try to populate it and, and see if anything's arrived. If there is any value in the buffer at all, what we're going to do is, um, well, I, I printed out, you don't actually need to do this, but I find this very useful, especially when you're debugging, to, to make sure that everything's behaving as, as you want it to. So this is going to print out every message, every command that's received from the GSM shield to the Arduino. It's just going to print it out to the, uh, to the serial monitor connection. And then we'll define our... Uh, our variables are possible pieces of information that we might want to know about the um, message that's been received or about the, the, the data that's been received rather. And then we'll try, we'll simply call in turn each of those functions that we had above, we'll try calling them in turn to see which one matches the, um, uh, the data that's been received. So first of all, we'll call the receive SMS message. That's going to look through that buffer and it's going to try and extract the message, the phone, and the date time from it. And then what I've done here, I mean, I've, I've printed some serial prints just to show you how you can use them, but I've also put some different examples of how you then might want to use those variables. So using strcomp, that lets you compare two strings. So if we compare the phone variable, which got populated um, here, so if we compare that to a phone number, and if that equals zero, it means that there's no differences between them. So in other words, it was a message that was received from this phone number. Well, then we can do something interesting. And you could have many, many different uh, if statements here. So you could have different behavior depending on who a text message was received from. Or alternatively, you might want to do different behavior based on what was said in the text. That probably seems more likely. And that's what we've got here. So um, rather than stra-comp, um, I'm using stra-case-comp. So this is a case-insensitive comparison between the contents of the text message received and, in this case, the word on. So if, you, if anyone sends a, a text message to this number, either on in capitals or in smalls or as a combination of those two, um, when that message is received, what we're going to do is we're going to just put a little debug output and then we're going to write a low signal to the zero uh, relay pin to the first relay channel um, so that's going to turn it on and then uh, the matching uh, the matching complement function of that is to say well okay if anyone sends a, a text message with the content off to uh, the Arduino and then what we're going to do is we're going to turn relay channel off instead by sending a high signal to the same relay pin and again you can you can add more complicated logic here so you could combine the who sent the message and what the contents of the message were and instead of doing a, an exact comparison as I'm doing here or a case insensitive comparison you could use that str str function as we did before to see okay if anywhere in the received text message does it mention a certain word then we're going to take this action and things like that. So you can get kind of quite creative with uh, with the behavior there. Uh, so that's all to do with um, receiving a text message. So receiving a text message, if you send on, it'll turn the channel on, off, it'll turn it off. What about if we receive a phone call? Okay, well, um, if that receive call function was able to extract uh, the command that says that there's an incoming call, it's going to store the phone number in this phone variable um, so we'll print that to the screen. And again, we'll use stracomp to compare the phone number uh, of the incoming call to a, to a known number in this case. If it matches, now in this case, I've, I've set up two cases. So I'm saying, well, okay, if this phone number calls us up, what we're going to do is answer the call, uh, which we do using this ATA command here. 
And then we'll also activate the second relay channel. Um, and then if anyone else calls other than this number here, however, we're not going to do anything at all. We're actually going to hang up the call. So if anyone else tries to turn on my uh, relay channel by calling my phone, nothing's going to happen. But if I call from my number, which is known up here, uh, then it's going to, to turn relay channel 2 on. That is until I end the call, because this final section at the bottom here, if we run the call ended function, if we're able to extract uh, the command that suggests that um, a call has been ended, so that um, uh, no carrier function, when that happens, what we're going to do is we're going to turn relay channel 2 off again. So what this ends up meaning, the behavior, is that if anyone else calls my uh, Arduino, nothing happens. If I call it, then for as long as I stay on the line, uh, relay channel 2 will become activated. But as soon as I hang up, uh, it will become deactivated again. And uh, that's the end of the Arduino code. So that's how you can use a mobile phone to communicate with an Arduino, sending and receiving texts and phone calls. And I think there's loads of applications you could do with this. Now, most of the projects I've done on this channel have been related to escape room games. And I'm not sure that this particular one is that well suited to escape rooms. Um, for one of which, normally escape rooms, you're not allowed to use a real mobile phone in there. And the other thing is you are somewhat at the mercy of the network provider. So you need to have, obviously, coverage on your mobile phone. You need to have reception for this to work. And also you're relying on uh, the speed of delivery of the SMS message, for example, being received in time uh, for the command. Now here in the UK, I've never really had a problem with text taking more than a couple of seconds to arrive, but it might be worth considering depending on where you are in the world. Um, but there's lots of other similar experiences where I think this could be really exciting. So imagine a, a sort of an interactive puzzle hunt where players use their real mobile phones to communicate with a character in the story. That character doesn't actually exist, it's a script running on an Arduino. But because the players are using their real mobile phones and they're having a dialogue um, with a character that appears to be coming from another normal mobile phone as well, you've kind of got this quite high level of immersion and you can have quite a complex script here that prompts and replies to different things that the players say in the game, different things they discover. Um, you can have a time script that sends out messages uh, at certain points in the game, for example. So there's loads and loads of, of things you can do with that, and I hope you'll be able to, to think of uses yourself. Um, as always, I will upload the um, code listings and the wiring diagrams and where I got all this stuff from and everything over on my Patreon account. So um, if you are registered there, you can head over there and download all the stuff. Um, if you uh, like these kind of projects and if you um, would like to and feel able to support me to continue doing them in the future, um, your support is very much appreciated. You can do that over at Patreon as well. Um, if you're not able to, that's fine. I try to put a new project like this each month up on uh, YouTube anyway, and you can always uh, follow along there. If you have any comments or suggestions or questions or anything else like that, or if you do end up using something like this in a project and you just want to, to share it, that would be amazing too. Um, please put them uh, below and I'll, you know, I'll love to, to check them out. But um, in the meantime, I'll just say um, thanks very much for watching and I'll see you next time.